Shalom, all praises to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem, Haraka, Kadash. Double honors unto your apostles and elders, great millstone, all rule well. And Shalom to the whole elect. This is a news and prophecy, prophecy and news video. All right, where um, let's go f fill um, articles, various events in the news via the Holy Scriptures commonly known as the Bible, the Holy Bible, okay, which is the word of the Most High Power, Yahweh, Ba'asham, Yahweh Shai, Ba'asham, Ha'arakar, Kadash. And what I just said was in the name of the Most High God, Yahweh, and in the name of His Son, Yahweh Shai, and in the name of the Holy Spirit, all right? So, and the one, the world ignorantly calls, the God of the Bible is a soul called black man and so was his son Yahweh Shai who the world ignorantly knows as Jesus Christ all right so this is the article from the Guardian and it reads extinction rebe ext extinction rebellion put an extinction re extinction rebellion on extremist list completely wrong says Keir Stack Stamer <laughs> labor leadership frontrunner joins police chiefs in denouncing the move all right Keir, Keir Starmer the Labour leadership frontrunner has branded a decision by the police to include extinction, re extension, extinction re rebellion on a list of extreme ideologies as completely wrong and counterproductive. All right. The shadow Brexit secretary and former chief prosecutor in England and Wales joined the police chiefs in denouncing the move revealed in The Guardian on Friday to put the XR's beliefs on the list of ideologies that warrant reporting someone to prevent pro um so, so lucky, um to put XR's beliefs on a list of ideologies that warrant reporting someone to the prevent program which seeks to stop terror attacks. Alright? So these this 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 um uh protest group known as Extinction Rebellion was placed upon the terrorist list basically the right that they are capable of committing terror attacks okay his condemnation came after the home secretary preeti patel um defended the decision saying it is important to look at a range of security risks all right that being the key this being the key point because <clears throat> i know well i'll i'll dive more into it at a later point in the, in the video but this right here, a range of security risks, means that they basically want to build a a, a a long list. What my interpretation, which I believe is on point, is they want to categorize different levels of risks. But still, the main point is whether or not they're categorized as a low or high risk, there's still a risk of a security risk in terms of it's a form of terrorism, all right? It may be a low form of, the, like a low um, threat, a low level threat, but it's still a security risk, which is in turn would label it as a, a form of terrorism, okay? While accepting that XR was not a terrorist organization, Patel told LBDC, LBC Radio that such an assessment had to be based in terms of the risk to the public, security risk, security threats, all right? Um, Stamer, who emerged as a clear favourite for Labour leadership among MPs on Monday with 89 nominations, said the guidance was wrong. It's completely wrong and counterproductive to describe extinction, extinction rebellion as an extreme ideology. He told The Guardian... I have spent a lifetime defending the right to protest and campaigning for action on climate crisis is hugely important. Stamer's position was backed by Nick Thomas um, Simmons, the shadow secretary uh, minister who called the decision incomprehensible. All right. He said the climate change is a real and present danger that requires an immediate policy response. This decision further calls into question the effectiveness of the PREVENT program, of which Labour has long argued for an independent review. Right? Since Lord Carlisle, Carlisle stood down as the independent reviewer, 
following legal um, challenge, the government has not appointed a replacement. All right. So the man, that, the Lord that was set in place to actually be an independent reviewer over um, to oversee over this um, prevent program, this contingent that they have put in place. He stepped down and now there's no one over there to challenge anything. All right. So what does that mean? That means they have free license to run rampant. And this, what this, what actually happened with this whole event is a byproduct of that, them not being, um, quote unquote, you know, you, <laughs> you know, they would say that because they're not being monitored, you know, they're being given free range to just do as they please. All right. But ultimately, the point is where they're heading with this is a whole different direction to what they're showing you. They must appoint someone who commands widespread confidence across different communities and carry out the robust review of prevent, of prevent that is urgently required. Now, if you look into the history of prevent um, this program, if you just Google it, um, you'll find a lot of information. So let me just go to, I'm going to read some excerpts out of, out of this um, Wikipedia page dealing with it. So this is Contest. Contest is the U United Kingdom's counter-terrorism strategy. It was first developed by the Home Office in early 2003 and a revised version was made public in 2006. Further revis revisions were published on the 24th of March 2009, 11th of July 2011. And most recently, June 2018, an annual report on the implementation of contests was released in March 2010. And most recently, in April 2014, the aim of the strategy is to reduce the risk to the UK and its interests overseas from terrorism so that people can go about their lives freely with co and with confidence. Right. So basically, it's a contingent set in place to basically protect the United Kingdom against any form of terrorism, all right? Contests are split into four work streams that are known within the counter-terrorism community as a four Ps, prevent, pursue, protect, and prepare. The prevent strategy has provoked notable controversy. So let's take a look at the prevent um, portion of this. Prevent, the purpose of prevent is to stop people from becoming terrorists or supporting terrorism. This includes countering terrorist ideology and challenging those who promote it um, supporting individuals who are especially vulnerable to becoming radicalised and working with sectors and institutions um, where the risk of radicalization is assessed to be high. The de-radicalisation programme is known as Channel. It is led by the police and liberal Muslim mentors who do not espouse any anti-Western violence. So as you can see, in its infancy, so to speak, it was really dealing with um, quote unquote Islam, all right, Muslims and whatnot. Okay, so let's move. Let's read on. As of February twenty fifteen, all national health cert, um, the NHS basically staff are required to undergo basic prevent awareness training, and schools have statutory a statutory statutory duty to have due regard for the prevention of terrorism. This is this duty does not extend but to teachers, but enables schools to embed safeguard measures against radicalization within their standard safeguarding policies. The leader of the twenty seventeen London Bridge attack and his brother was involved with prevent. Oh shit! I didn't even know that. The per the uh, perpetrator of the Parsons Green train bombing had been referred to prevent. All right, so that's some information on it. I'll uh, go further into the criticism now. You can read these various points, but I don't really want to read half on these points. I know there's one main underlying factor. It's that being um, this last article, um, paragraph, which you can check out the rest. In early 2020, really it's going to, uh, to kind of, you know, summarise it. It's basically dealing with, like... Um, the finger being pointed at Muslims, all right? But in early 2020, The Guardian reported that Extinction Rebellion, the Climate Emergency Campaign Group, group promoted by Greta Thunberg, and I heard about this, I didn't really pay too much attention to this 
uh, Greta Thunberg. But I know that she came out from what I can remember. Um, uh, I know there's one key point. I think she <laughs> rebuked Trump for the most part in a very um, abrupt manner. Mm. But yeah, you can check her out, man. Oh, I'm not up on her like that. But I know that she gave a speech and the world's been running behind her ever since because of, you know, because of what she said. With a climate emergency campaign group promoted by Greta Thunberg had been wrongly included on an official list of extremist organisations whose members should be reported to the authorities. So now how did this this group that's you know, promoted by Greta Thunberg, who I believe stood in the, the, the United Nations or she gave a talk or may may have been in the UN. Um sorry. Um mm. Yeah, really ain't up on this girl boy. Okay, but I know she was up in the midst of some one of these um, main um, forums or domains were of in the High Council of Esau's um, leadership, basically. Yeah, UN um, attended the UN Climate Action Summit in New York City. So yeah, that's what I was I was aware of something like that. So she'd been up in basically she'd been in the mix of like. The beast, basically, the ten horns and the, the seven heads and the ten horns, basically. She's she's been up in a mix. So now the point being, <coughs> how is it that this girl that managed to promote this um climate um emergency campaign group? All right, this girl managed to like basically promote this group, but this group has somehow ended up on a terrorist um list. In the United Kingdom, all right. So, so let's read again. In early 2020, the Guardian reported that Extinction Rebellion, the climate emergency campaign group promoted by Greta Thunberg, had been wrongly included on an official list. And we know, I believe, I personally believe, my, to my opinion, that this was done purposely for the sole, for on purpose, for the sole purpose of priming the people's minds to see how they react to something like this, okay? And see what their reaction was be would be. Had been wrongly included on an official list of extremist organizations whose members should be reported to the authorities. And really the reason why they the reason why I said that is because what they want to do is they want to infringe on the, the the quote unquote freedom of speech. Okay? So as we read earlier with Preeta Patel, she mentioned that there should be um they should be included on the list for different measures of terrorism basically a range of security risks so different ranges within security risks so the, what they're basically saying is if you speak out against the government that basically you're deemed a terrorist okay quote unquote a terrorist not even quote unquote a straight up a terrorist just for speaking against the government you don't agree with the way their policies in terms of climate change and these different things, which will overextend into various things, you'll be deemed part of a terroristic group, all right? And we've seen how they've been placing um, gang members under terrorist charges, okay, for buying guns and whatnot. They're extending the charges so far and wide and broad to the fact that they're now placing terroristic, um, terrorist um what's it called, charges on these gang members, man. So they're really trying to, you know, extend the cloak, the, the guise of terrorism to make it, to normalise it to the ears of the people, to basically make it as to where if you're not following a system which, you know, it, is dealing with the image of the beast, which ultimately will lead into the mark of the beast, if you ain't dealing with the image, then we're going to have to get rid of you because you ain't going to deal with the mark of the beast. And that's really what, it, this is what, this is the stones that are being set in place to the foundation that's being laid for basically the coming 
of the RFID chip, which is the mark of the beast, okay? Where they deem anyone that basically isn't with the system, they're going to take them to internment camps and they're basically going to chop off their heads and harvest their organs, all right? Taking off their head with guillotines and harvesting their organs and utilizing their flesh for um, people, for human burgers and whatnot, all right? To basically capitalize off um, of the people that are not in their eyes worthy to be part of the beast system, the satanic um, system, all right? So, um, yeah, let me read the rest of this. Um, so, um, okay. Carla, a, bar- a, a barrister and liberal democrat peer, was appointed by the Conservative government to carry out a review of Prevent, but stood down because of claims he was biased and amid a legal and amid a legal, a legal challenge. So he, he was said he was biased anyway. He too denounced the decision. The first independent reviewer of terrorism le- le- legislation from 20, 2000 to 11, 2001 to 11 said the police had made an error and were right to apologise. Okay, so he also denounced it as well. Carlisle said the prevent strategy is meant to deal with violent extremism. But again, we had a, a Preeti Patel basically say that they wanted to deal with a variety of a range of, of risks. And um, I had this other article as well. Mm, I'll probably do a follow-up video with the other article because it's, it's a nice... It just builds upon the point I can't get at the moment because I don't know where I, I saved it somewhere else. But that's neither here nor there. So anyway, reading on. Um, so um, it says, With terrorism, an exile are not violent terrorists. They're disruptive campaigners, all right? But they want to, they want to, um, basically, that they want to blur the line of disruptive um, campaigner and violent terrorists, they just want to say there's a violent terrorist and there's a non-violent terrorist, but they're all terrorists at the end of the day. Because why? They're against the system, all right? The system of the beast. So that's where they're heading with this, man. The list of extreme ideologies, including XR, came in a guide dated um, to last November produced by counter-terrorism police in Southeast and was intended for police officers, government organizations and teachers who by law have to report concerns about radicalization. XR featured alongside threats to national security such as neo-Nazi terrorism and a pro-terrorist Islamist group. All right. Um, wow. Police said including a non-violent climate emergency group was a mistake and a recall and recalled the document but only after they discovered the Guardian had learned of it. All right. So they basically they would, if they would have been left, if no one would have realized, they wouldn't have done nothing, basically, all right. And that shows you where they're heading with this. They just gotta go back and you know cook the books, basically, to make it as to where people don't mind them being on the on the on the list. Carlos said, "My view is, or even not people minding, but just make it where they can finesse it to the people. My view is, it is important to distinguish between terrorism and protest." XR is mostly legitimate protests, but you have a thing also known as what agent provocateurs, where a friendly protest can be turned into a, a terroristic, a terrorist um, attack. Basically, you know, it can turn into a terrorist group, and you had that that you've had that in various um, protests across the world, for the sake of the powers that be to basically work their agenda, and the police are quite right to back down. It's very difficult. It is a very difficult area and it is unsurprising that mistakes are made. This was an error of judgment, but in this area, errors of judgment are going to be made from time to time. So they're setting up the minds of the people to say, hey, look, you know, we're going to make errors, but you just have to bear with us. But what kind of errors that are they talking about, man? How deep does the error go? Are we talking about someone being killed or... Um, put in prison for a lifetime because of that error or are we just saying someone getting put on the list and taken off after a couple of days right Diane Abbott 
and then the really extreme is their head getting chopped off, man. You know what I mean? But Diane Abbott, the shadow home secretary, said Patel's comments are indefensible. XR has threatened the leak with has threatened legal action over the guidance. Uh, over the guidance. Alright. Sir Peter Fay Fay Fay. Um, who is head of prevent from 2010 to 2015 subsequently told the guardian that such categorizations risk prevent losing confidence from communities all right so he's saying look doing things like this is going to make them risk confidence within the, the people all right asked by Faye's comments patel defended the prevent program and the police actions when it comes to anti-terrorism prevent and the work that the government is doing and has done for a considerable pre period of time we are constantly so lucky let me read that again when it comes to uh anti-terrorism prevent and the work that the government is doing and has done for a considerable period of time we are constantly looking at individual groups she said so they got you know they're looking at everyone basically she said that's right and that's proper but everything has to be based on calibrated and calibrated upon risk, okay? So the risk is, and this other article I had, they basically, the guy basically said he at his university, I believe Reading or Oxford University, how basically you had police from Prevent come in and basically say that you have told the lecturers they have to be mindful how they, how they um teach their students because basically... They could be radicalized in any fashion to become terrorists, basically, just because of their beliefs over climate change and um, animal deaths, um, animal tests, and various different things people protest for. They're basically saying that the way they're looking at them is they're potential terrorists. All right, so that broadens the whole. It, like you might just disagree and say, like I don't think, um, you know, um, the roads should um have fines or something like that and you know they they they'll work that into some form of te you know terrorism basically okay asked if she believed exile was a t no let me read on um so boris johnson's spokesperson said <clears throat> the home secretary was very clear that it was considered a protest group these are obvious matters for the police and the police are set out on Friday that they were looking at this. XR, which has held a series of protests against a climate emergency um, involving blocking streets, was included in a 12-page guide produced by counter-terrorism police in the southeast, in the, in the southeast, in, in the south, Slakia, excuse me. In the southeast, titled safe, safeguarding young people and adults from ideological extremism, which is marked official, it says that issues to look out for include people who speak in strong or emotive terms about environmental issues. So, if you disagree with the environment, with the way that the government's handling the environment, a uh, people will be told to look at you sideways and basically potentially report you to the authorities because you're you're capable of being a terrorist okay and that that goes that's that's a very broad sweeping spectrum we're talking about i don't know no niggas that be out there protesting we're talking about like uh student um you know so called white people edomites that go out there with their placards and protests against various things we're talking about them in the 17 to even the older ages that have been doing it since the 70s and whatnot. They're the type of people now they're saying are, are capable of being terrorists, okay? So they're broadening, broaden, broadening in the spectrum of what a terrorist can look like. Ultimately, what they want to do is they want to make the idea of a terrorist be faceless, basically. Be capable of being anyone, all right? And to look out for young people who neglect to attend school so if you if you played it the true if you truant now what's that bloody thing they called play the truant but yeah if you truant if you you bunk that's it if you bunk school now you're basically a, a, a bloody potential terrorist if you bunk 
class to go and smoke a spliff in a park with your man them, you're a potential terrorist now, all right? Or participate in planned school walkouts, which they said they had one before. So they're basically, you know, pointing in the finger at um, protesters now. So essentially what they're saying is protest is a form of terrorism. That's essentially what they're saying. If you're protesting, if you're speaking out against the government, you are now a terrorist. And we know where that really is heading for. That's talking about the, the, the basically the famine of the hair and of the word, all right? And the shutting down of the internet. Really, all of this is a shot in the dark against who? Us, man, the so-called... The so-called... <laughs> The Hebrew Israelites, man, the so-called Negroes, Hispanics and Native Americans, the elect of the nation of Israel who are out there prophesying the downfall of this kingdom, right? That's where it is, a shot in the dark against us. When the Guardian first asked police about the, gui- the guidance, officials said uh, they would review it following further questions. Counter-terrorism police confirmed it had been um, circulated to statutory partners and had been recalled. They said they now accepted the protest group was not extremists, right? But they they changed their tune, but it don't mean it's, it's all done away. Because before that, what did they, they said it all, man, all right? 